Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, Wa Salatu Wa Salam Wa Ala Rasulillah, Wa Man Wala, Amma Ba'd. So we are finishing, we are beginning, continuing the beginning of the third lesson. So the reasons for Iman to increase are reflecting upon the creations, giving up sins, increasing good deeds, studying Tawheed, especially the names and attributes. نعم الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا الى يوم الدين اما بعد فقد قال الشيخ هيثم سرحان حفظه الله تعالى the means of increasing iman <coughs> and our uh, reader may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward him he's reading as should be from left to right in English. However, I think the way in, in which it should be written, I, I think the Ikhwa that translated this, they made this mistake. So it should be from right to left. So you begin with Dirasat al Tawheed. So studying Tawheed, studying Tawheed, and especially the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why is that? When you think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Rahman, the merciful, Ar Rahim, the mercy giving, at Tawab, the one who forgives in abundance. And uh, so it increases your Iman because you seek the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who accepts repentance. And also you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who's Shadidul Iqab. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his punishment is the uh, not like any punishment you cannot compare so all of these are the fruits of the iman in the names and attributes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also brothers for example uh, obedience to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worship for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you feel it a person feels his iman increasing sometimes some of the fitna and some of the biggest fitan that we have nowadays is the tabarruj of women, women who go out without <clears throat> the hijab. So sometimes you see some of the brothers when they come to a majlis ilm, they come to a gathering of ilm in the mosque with one of the mashayikh and so on. And by the way, yani this, the evil of this, when Sheikh Abd Razak al Badr was speaking about this, he started crying. He started crying about the fitna that the uh, youngsters are uh, exposed to nowadays. So when they sit in the hilak of ilm and they seek ilm and so on, that increases their iman. So that even helps the younger brothers. So sitting in these hilak of ilm and learning and uh, uh, praying and, and so on, and al-iktharu min al-ta'at, also charity and uh, uh, fasting, this will be a great help for youngsters when they are uh, when they are trying to do what البصر, not look, to look away and so on <clears throat> so uh, this is one of the fruits of that and also in general just like the Sheikh said when you increase in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and acts of worship your iman increases and we all feel that we all feel that and that's sometimes you see a person when he is Yani reading the Quran and contemplating at the Quran and so he starts crying while somebody who's next to him who's uh, listening to the same thing is not crying the same thing in prayer subhanallah and we have tark al maasi of course ya akhwa <clears throat> it's like a chain when you fall into one maasiya it will bring another maasi when you fall into one sin it will bring another sin and another sin and so on what is al fisq Brothers, well, al-fisq is deviating from the truth, deviating from the correct path. This is fisq. So somebody who deviated, transgressed. <clears throat> and committing major sins is fisq. And also al-israru ala sagira so not repenting from minor sins, is also fisq. So when somebody continuously does minor sins, and this was explained 
in the explanation of uh, the book of al wasatiya which is an excellent explanation by Sheikh Abdul, Abdul Aziz al rashid Rahimahullahu Ta'ala. So the opposite of that, so when a person falls into bid'ah, it might lead him to more deviance and more trans actually, most probably that's what's going to happen, leads him to another and another. And this is, we could see this, we see this in the world, subhanAllah. People who deviate a little bit, they transgress more and more and more with time. The same thing, brothers, with ma'asi, the same thing with sitting with the people of bid'ah or sitting with the people of sins. They will influence you and you will continue in sin. So moving away and staying away from ma'asi also increases our iman. And remember that, brothers. Remember that. When you see that certain ibadat, certain acts of worship and, and you, uh, that are being hard for you and so on, it is because of these ma'asi, because of these sins that we don't stay away from. And the last one, he said that tafakkuru fil makhluqat, yes, when we contemplate in ourselves. Uh, and the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. Reasons for iman to decrease, not studying tawheed, especially the names and attributes, not doing good deeds, sinning and not reflecting upon the creation yeah and this is the opposite of that now so the six pillars of iman are allah the angels the books messengers the last day and qadr which is predestiny in its good and bad The first pillar, believing in Allah, is to believe in the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to believe in tawheed of lordship, to believe in tawheed of worship, and to believe in the names and attributes. Naam, what does that mean? <clears throat> first of all, you believe in the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is straightforward. And then he said, iman with the lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is called Tawheed al rububiyyah We have something called Tawheed al rububiyyah which is the Tawheed of Lordship, the oneness of Lordship. وَهُوَ إِفْرَادُ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ بِأَفْعَالِهِ So it is singling out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his actions, subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِفْرَادُ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ بِالْخَلْقِ وَالرَّزْقِ وَالْمُلْكِ وَالْتَدْبِيرِ to single out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in creation, that he is the creator, and in pr providing, he's uh, uh, in provision, meaning that he provides for all creation, his sovereignty and his dominion, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all of these things are actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَقُلْنَا مِرَارًا وَتِكْرَارًا We have said many a time that it is pronounced الرزق and not الرزق. Because a rizq is the provision itself that is given to you. But a razq with the fatha on the ra is the action of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The action of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he said, Al Imanu bi uluhiyatillahi azza wa jal. So uh, what is the uluhiya? It is tawheedul uluhiya huwa tawheedul ibadah. So it is the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the tawheed of worship to single out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the actions of us, of the creation. So the second, so the first one was the action of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, lordship. When it comes to ubudiyya, to, uh, 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 to worship, it is our actions, our actions. So we single out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with acts of worship, all of them. And we only single out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a qa'idah that you need to write down. All of this you need to write down. But this, especially this one, it will make a lot of things easier for you. Because when you encounter something that you don't know the hukum for, what you, mean, what you do is... <clears throat> uh, what you do is... La ilaha illallah. Uh, you go back to the rule, to the qa'idah, in order to know this ruling. 
Now the Qa'id and Sheikh bin Uthaymin has mentioned this and we read this in the explanation of Sheikh bin Uthaymin for Umdat al-Ahkam that, that a student of knowledge should pay close attention to and take good care of the Qawaid, the rules. So what is the rule? Any act of worship, any act of worship, when it is dedicated to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is major shirk. What does that mean? It means it gets you outside the fold of Islam. Major shirk is what gets a person outside the fold of Islam. Any worship, any type of worship, if it is dedicated to any other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this gets you outside the fold of Islam. And this is Tawheed al uluhiyah It's only dedicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we have... <clears throat> Believing in the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. We affirm what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has affirmed for himself. And we deny what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has denied about himself. Without tahrif. Without distortion. And without ta'til. Without making these names void. As if they have or hold no meaning. And without tamthil. Likening. The names and attributes and the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the creation, to our actions and so on, our names and attributes. And without takif, without saying how or asking how. Because asking how, brothers, is a bid'ah, is a bid'ah just as Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala said. And this is briefly, this is briefly uh, uh, what the Shaykh was talking about. Naam. So going into more detail on the names and attributes, meaning the intellect, uh, the intellect cannot imagine the existence of the creation without the existence of the creator. As it says in uh, Surah 52, Ayah 35, or were they created by nothing or were they themselves the creators? Senses, in difficult times, you raise your hands to the sky and say, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, O oh Lord. And by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your calamity is removed. Subhanallah. Subhanallah, ya ikhwa. I remember once, <clears throat> sadly, we had a co-worker who went to do his master's in the UK. He did his master's and came back an atheist. <clears throat> now, I didn't know this person before, but I have only met this person when he came back as an atheist. So the guy was saying some very suspicious things. And I said, this talk is, is atheist talk. And he said, I'm an atheist. I said, A'udhu Billah. So ta'ajabt. I said, subhanAllah, yani, your mother tongue is Arabic. Yani, you are a Muslim. You are here in Kuwait where Islam, alhamdulillah, is strong. And the people of Sunnah and Jama'ah are strong and so on. And so he started talking to me that this is only faith and so on. I said, no, Islam, uh, yani, I, we could prove that in five minutes. I told him that it is not just based on faith and blind faith. No, no, no. This, this talk doesn't apply to Islam. Maybe it applies to something else, not Islam. So we started chatting. So I started telling him, I said, Ya Akhi, Allah says in the Quran that the mountains are pigs, like pegs, pegs. You know what a peg is? What a... So that that, uh, 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 that are put uh, uh, on the earth or put into the earth. And I said, look, even scientists that have nothing to do with Islam, they say that, you know, a peg, only a little, uh, uh, only a little portion of it is showing on the surface. And most of it is what is beneath the ground. So now the scientists, they say what? That the mountains, only a little bit of the mountain is showing and so much more is hidden beneath the ground. So subhanAllah, this was said 1,400 years ago. It was revealed in the Quran. So I said, how did they know? He didn't know what to answer. He said, maybe, maybe there, he was guessing. He was guessing. I said, he was guessing. I said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that the clouds are heavy. Did they measure it at the time? You were saying this is not, not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're saying this is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has written this. He said, yeah. I said, a'udhu billah, but okay. You're saying this. Did he measure the clouds? Did he weigh the clouds? He said, now when we go to Google, let's Google very quickly. You'll see 3,000 tons. Accurate description. I said, Ya Akhi, the Prophet 
in the hadith of the Hawd, the fount lake, he says, Kizanuhu, or uh, uh, he says, Aniyatuhu ka'adadi nujumi sama. And uh, excuse me, before that, I asked him, I said, Would the Prophet ﷺ know the population of people throughout these times? He said, No, 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 impossible. I said, What about the stars? He said, Impossible. I said, Look, in the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ told us that the fount lake of uh, 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 is <clears throat> the uh, the ania the ania are the things used for uh, like you put water and drink from and so on are like huh? like he's using a simile so it's not exactly but like ka ka the kaf litashbi ka adad nujum as-sama i said at their time if you look at the 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 stars in the sky how many would you be able to count not many you would you wouldn't be counting a million for example no. I said, and the Prophet وسلم, said, and of course, Muslims, they will go to the fount lake. And the hypocrites and kuffar amongst the Muslims, they will be shunned away. Ya ikhwa, look at the contemplate at this, just like the Sheikh is telling us to contemplate at. How many Muslims have lived in the past 1,400 years? The number is massive. The number is huge. At the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they couldn't, the, the biggest number they knew is a thousand thousand, meaning what? A million. Nowadays, Muslims are almost two billion. How many Muslims have lived in the past 1,400 years? That's a massive number. <clears throat> and how many more will live until the day of judgment? Allah knows best. Only Allah knows. But we know that the number is massive. Now, what does science say? It says that the stars is a huge, massive, not trillions among trillions. So look at the tashbih, look at the simile of the Prophet Sallallahu He said, like the number of the stars. It's an accurate description for the stars as well as for how many Muslims will live. Wallahi, the guy was like, couldn't speak. He was speechless. And I was giving him this and I was giving it. He said, no, oh, it's by chance. It happened by chance. Look. Look at the arrogance. And we continue. We continue on. And I give him another one. And another one. I say, look, Allah, so the Prophet وسلم, told us to uh, 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 to, to uh, uh, how to translate this to basically take care of our children and not let them, you know, uh, when the night comes to protect our children and keep away our children and so on. He said, the Prophet وسلم, said, because the shaitan yantashir, because the shaitan spreads at night contemplate at this ya ikhwa. when does when do crimes happen killing when there are certain places i remember when i was in germany because i was in medical treatment with my mother <clears throat> in germany may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve her and heal her i remember there were certain places that, that we we were told certain gardens, parks, we were told not to go after dark. It's dangerous. Subhanallah. So there they say there are people that sell drugs there. There are criminals there. Um, the, the When are the gambling places, when, when are they open? At night. When are prostitution places, <clears throat> excuse my language, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you, <clears throat> but this is for a benefit. When are they open? The brothels and so on. At night. When are uh, the uh, uh, the strip clubs and the, and the, and so on. You understand what I mean? So all of this evil. When does it happen? In the morning. It's not even open in the morning. At night. At night. Even crimes such as people um, uh, bringing in illegal stuff into a country outside of a country and so on and so all of this happens at night. So when the shaitan spreads, what do you think spreads? What the what do you associate with the spreading of shaitan at night? You associate goodness, you associate honesty, and no, 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 of course not. All these evils that we see at night, all these evils and these uh, uh, very corrupt places that are open at night. Subhanallah. 1,400 years later, this is what we see with our own eyes. Absolutely, ya akhwa, that's what we see. The bars, the I don't know what, they, uh, all of them open at night. Subhanallah. The discos, the dancing places, all of them, they thrive at night. Subhanallah. You see it with your own eyes. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ Excuse me. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the, the mentioning and the remembrance of the Prophet sallallahu will be held high. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it is a done deal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the past tense. Rafa'na, it's done. Wa rafa'na laka dhikrak. It's a 1,000 years, 400. Right now, what do you see with your eyes? This is proof you see with your own eyes. What do you see? All these Muslim countries. What do they say? What do they say in the Adhan? Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Loud in the skies of every Muslim country, even in non-Muslim countries. What do you see when the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu is mentioned? Everyone says sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu. We love the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu more than we love ourselves, our children, our mothers, our wives. Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa taala said that his remembers. And his mentioning will be held high, and it is just like Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "Inna shani'aka huwa al-abtar." Verily, the one who's against the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and who's uh, uh, who hates the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and so is abtar. Abtar meaning what? He's cut off. So Subhanallah, I ask some of my students. I say, "Ya akhwa, can you name the people that uh, died in Ghazwat Badr?" Can you tell me their ages, their children, their... Nobody answers. Nobody knows. Subhanallah. And you have to dig deep into these things. The people who fought the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and wanted to kill the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, nowadays forgotten, cut off, just like Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has said. Oh, I'm giving him evidence. I stayed three hours with the guy. One evidence after the other. One evidence. Nothing. And then... And I think this moved something in him, but Allahu A'lam, because I don't see him, alhamdulillah. I said, look, the Muslim, the non-Muslim, even the, the one who doesn't believe, even the atheist who doesn't believe in a deity, when he feels that he is in major trouble, what does he do? He looks at the sky. He looks up, doesn't look down, doesn't look right, doesn't look left. He looks up. Raises his hands even, even if he has never seen a Muslim. Raises his hands and he said, and of course this is kufr, what he says is kufr and it is called the dua of the, of the atheist. He says, well, God, if there is a God or if you are there, you know, something's very bad. My daughter is dying, please help me, something like this. And some of them enter Islam when this happened, when, when this is answered, they enter. So in the end, with this uh, person, I told him about this, about what the Sheikh is talking about now. That we see with our own eyes, even the atheist, as I have mentioned, when they uh, 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 call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they do the same thing. They look up and they raise their hands. So this is fitrah. I was talking to him about something called fitrah, which is the innate disposition that all humans have. So he, and this one shook him a little bit, but this guy, doesn't seem like he wants guidance. So I asked, I said in the end, I said, like, well, what do I say? What can I tell you? And he, all I can say is, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide you back to Islam. He said, uh, he said, uh, uh, say, alayka min Allahi ma tastahiq. I said, he's even wanting me to make dua on him. I said, this person and he has transgressed. So obviously, there are some people, ya ikhwa, doesn't matter. Even if you show him the truth, even if you show him clear cut, crystal clear evidence that he cannot deny. So the even his reply, his replies were very much weak. Well, guessing, maybe out of luck, maybe by chance. I, I don't know. I said, oh, what is this? And this is replying. Ya akhwa, this person is, is saying this to the one thing that will make him successful. This life doesn't matter. We don't know when we will die. We don't know if we will see tomorrow. Nobody knows. And even if we lived a hundred years, it is not comparable to how long we will be in the barzakh, in the, in the life of the barzakh, in the, in the grave, or end in the hereafter, which never ends. Which never ends. 
So this person said, oh, maybe they're guessing, maybe they're this and that, and he's dismissing all of this. A'udhu billah. Ya a person should be really thinking about the hereafter to be successful. How, how can we be successful is when we are safeguarded from the punishment of the hereafter and when we win by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the jannah. So it's not thinking about all of these things. We are put on this world for this, ya akhwa, for tawheed, for tawheed. So as this person, he has lost his tawheed because he studied what I understood from him, a little bit of democracy here and there and I don't know what. And yani this, subhanallah, subhanallah, how lost is this person? And he's dismissing the truth by these silly, idiotic claims like, uh, maybe guessing, maybe. And in the end, when he couldn't answer, he said, say, alayka min Allah ma Anyway, brothers, I mention these things because I want you to know these things. And because this increases our iman. And what are we talking about? We're talking about how iman increases and decreases. So these things, when we listen to these things, it increases our iman. When we see these, these dala'il on tawheed rububiyya, because this is not needed. Like when you read the books of the ulama, they say nobody uh, doubts the rububiyya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody is so ignorant as to doubt that there is a creator for the universe. This is what the ulama said before our uh, pious predecessors, our salaf. Now we have reached the ignorance nowadays. We have reached the ignorance nowadays. People say, there, no, no, there is no creator. Subhanallah. So now we have to bring dala'il al-rububiyya. Subhanallah. Tawheed al-rububiyya now. Subhanallah. Naam. Natural instinct, as is said in Bukhari and Muslim, no one is born except they are upon fitra. His parents turn him into a Jew or Christian or Majin. A uh, better translation is everyone is born upon fitra. Kullun aw kullu mawludin yuladu ala al-fitra. Every newborn is born on the fitra. Like we just said, even the atheist, when, when he wants to pray as a grown man, he looks at the sky and raises his hand. Subhanallah. There is a story that is said about al, uh, Imam al haramin al Jawaini, that uh, uh, when, when al Hamadani he told him, if we leave away all of this thinking and mantiq and all of this stuff, what is this neat disposition for everybody to look at the sky and raise their hands to the sky when asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So Jawaini went down from his mimbar, from his platform. And he said, Hayyarani al Hamadani, Hayyarani al Hamadani. The Hamadani has made me puzzled. The Hamadani has made me puzzled. And he didn't know how to answer this question. Subhanallah. I used this with, a, with an atheist. Same thing. He couldn't, he couldn't answer. He didn't know what to say. Subhan Rabbil Ibad. And this is, Ya Akhwa, yani, uh, when we say they look up, so this is the aboveness, the true aboveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala above his throne, above the heavens and the earth. And this is an attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is in the Quran and in the Sunnah and the Sahaba said this. And amongst the Sahaba with correct chains of narration, Abu Bakr, as siddiq Ibn Abbas, Ibn Umar, our mother Zainab, our mother Aisha radiallahu anha ardaha, and from the Tabi'een, Masruq ibn al-Ajda and so on and so forth. <coughs> so this is, uh, and Ibn al-Qayyim has brought so many evidence uh, for this in his books. Naam. and the legislated sources legislated sources are many ibn al-qayyim rahimahullah mentioned that there is not a verse in the book of allah except that it has a reference to tawheed without exception and now is shar is they translate shar to legislation a shar yes you could you could say that and the shar means islam that's what it means the deen itself now second is the, the second pillar is the belief in his angels. Angels are from the invisible world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created them from light. They obey Allah and never disobey him. They have souls. As is said, Holy Spirit in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 87. They have a they body. Have souls. Wa ajsad. As it says in uh, Surah 35, in the first ayah, who made, who made the angels messengers with wings? 
they have a heart because in the Surah 34, Ayah 23, where it says so much so that when fear is banished from their hearts. And they have intellect in Surah 34, yeah. Ayah 23. So that, we learned something new. We learned something new today. What did we learn? What well, the angels have souls, have bodies, have intellects, and they have hearts. And the Shaykh Khaytham Sarhan, Habibullah, he brought from the Quran an evidence for each uh, individual claim. Naam. They, the angels, say, what is it that you, uh, Lord, has said? They question and respond, which proves that they have intellect. We believe in them, their names, Jibreel, Mikael, Israfil, etc. Their yeah, duties. They, say, they said, uh, 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 What did your Lord say? So they have intellects. No. We believe in their duties such as the carriers of the throne, and everything we have been informed about them. The third pillar is the belief in the books. We believe that they are from the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down to us and not created. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent... it's an attribute. Sent... Attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly speaks. Naam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent with every messenger a book. We believe in those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has informed us of by name, their narrations, and their rulings, which have not been abrogated by the Quran, since the Quran abrogates what came before it from these scriptures. And it is muhayminan, meaning yeah, trustworthy, muhayminan, tr meaning trustworthy and highness and a witness over them. The Quran, the Torah, meaning the Torah, uh, the Torah of Prophet Musa alayhi salam, Al-Injil, which is the gospel of Prophet Isa alayhi salam, Al-Zabur, or the Psalm, which is the book of Prophet Dawood alayhi salam, and the Huf of Ibrahim and Musa, which are the scriptures of Prophets Ibrahim and Musa no. alayhi salam. I have seen a silly claim that somebody is saying that the Quran that we have is not the Quran, and the Quran is in the Lawh al-Mahfud, in the preserved tablet, and what we all of this bid'ah. Uh, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. And this is bid'ah, brothers. To say this is bid'ah. What we have is the Quran. What we have is the Quran. Tayyib. What does, uh, يعني, Allah al musta'an there is this phenomenon that a person enters Islam and he does, he just enters Islam and all of a sudden he becomes a da'iyah. No, ya akhwa, this needs years of studying. And uh, instantly starts, even doesn't speak Arabic and starts bringing evidence from the Quran. Allah al musta'an so I've heard one of the of يعني, the claims is that uh, Quran, that Quran. So what does this mean? It means that meaning what? يعني, uh, عفواً, uh, uh, عفواً, الكتاب, so he's saying عفواً, again. He's saying what? He's saying ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه. So he's saying what? That book. So he says this is for something which is near and that for something that is far. So that meaning that we don't have it here. So subhanallah. In Arabic this is used to raise the status. To raise the status of something. This is used all the time in Arabic. He doesn't speak Arabic. طيب, fine. For the sake of argument we say fine. So if I bring you this, you're going to change your mind? Yes. Because in Surah Al-Isra, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna hadha al-Qur'ana yahdi lillati hiya aqon. Verily, this Qur'an guides to that which is best. So there you go, out the window what you just said. You have no clue what you are talking about. Absolutely deviating from the way of the people of Sunnah and Jama'ah. But he has millions of followers and they have millions and it doesn't matter does not matter what matters is the truth the evidence is this the saying of the ulama of, and the people of sunnah and jama'a is this a saying of the sahaba no is this a saying of the tabi'in no is this a saying of tib'ut tabi'in no is this a saying of abu hanifa and the imam malik and the shafi'i and, and al bukhari and muslim and, and no none of them so, at tirmidhi abu dawood none of them Totally yani, separated from the Salaf. 
and then they say this is the right way why because he read one and he was fed this ayah from the quran and he thinks just because it was said that it means uh, that it is not existent in this world this is a very يعني, weak understanding and it shows how weak this person or or these يعني, people who speak about this are and they shouldn't be making da'wah unless they actually seek ilm first they take it from the ulama in before starting to speak in public and so on Naam. fourth pillar is the belief in the messengers we believe that they are all men and possess none of the characteristics of lordship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent them sent down revelation to them and aided them with his verses and signs we believe that they are ibad and not to be worshipped messengers not to be reject rejected because they, they are worshippers they are worshippers of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so by definition he who worships shouldn't be worshipped Naam. they conveyed the message they advised their nations and they fulfilled their mission and struggled in the way of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we believe in all of them their names their stories and in the signs that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used to aid them with the first of the prophets is Adam alayhi salam. The first messenger is Nuh alayhi salam. And the seals of the prophets is Muhammad sallallahu from, alayhi wasallam. The ulama, from the ulama who said the first messenger is Idris is mistaken. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on them. On the ulama. No. All of the previous laws are abrogated by the law revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The fifth pillar is the belief in the last day. Believing in everything that happens after death from the soul exiting the body, the angels carrying it to the heavens, either the heavens will open so believing or the, the best, the best, the best definition, the best definition is this. Believing in everything that happens after death. Everything that happens after death is included by the last day. And this is the best definition for this. And I think this is a definition mentioned by Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala, if I'm not mistaken. Naam. The angels carrying it carrying the soul to the heavens, either the heavens will open or the gates of the heavens will be closed on him, then they will return it back to the body as one hears the footsteps of, that, of those burying him. Then the questioning of the two angels and the punishment of or reward of the grave, followed by the resurrection, the account, the bridge, paradise or hellfire, the intercession, and the believers seeing their Lord on the day of judgment and in paradise as Allah wills, and Hawth, the river of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah. So uh, we studied all of this in Usul al-Sunnah when we have explained Usul al-Sunnah for Imam Ahmed ibn Hanba. So most of you know this by heart. Yeah. The sixth pillar is the belief in the Qadr, predestiny. Yeah. Predestiny, divine decree, um, Preordainment, Al Qadr. I want you brothers now to focus with me. And um, Laila, Xander, you should say this while you're sleeping. I mean, we have explained this so many times. Ah, can you tell me what are our dear brother Xander? <clears throat> if you are in a position to speak, tell me what are the four. When we speak about Qadr, what are the four things that we instantly talk about? Maybe he's not able to speak. Maybe he's not. Abdul Hakim, can you speak? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Huh? Same question. Yeah, Afwan, it's on the screen right now. Like, you know, it's ah. knowledge writing, well, creation. Ah, oh, you see. Ah, oh, you can see yeah. it. Yes. Tayyib, Tayyib. I'm not looking at this. Tayyib, Tayyib. Tayyib, naam. Uh, but you should memorize this, يعني, especially you guys, mashallah, يعني, we have gone through this so many times. طيب. We talk about four things. Memorize them. Al-ilm, the knowledge. Al-kitaba, writing. Al-mashki'a, will. Al-khalq, creation. Memorize them. Whenever Al-Qadr is mentioned, remember these four things. What are they? What is Al-ilm? We believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows 
what was what is what will be and what wasn't if it was or if it were how it would turn out to be yani allah azza wa jalla ya'lamu ma kana wa ma yakunu law kana kayfa yakun ma kana wa ma yakunu ma kana wa ma yakunu wa ma lam yakun law kana kayfa yakun and I, I remember that Sheikh Saleh Sihimi, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him, when he used to visit us here in Kuwait, he would add an. I still remember this. He says, ma kana wa ma yakunu wa ma lam yakun an law kana kayfa yakun. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve the Sheikh. What is the evidence for this? What is the evidence that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what wasn't, if it was, how it would turn out to be? We say there are many in the Quran. We have gone through the ones in uh, Surah Al-Kahf, I remember, in the last time. So let's change this time. Let's see Surah Taha. So this is going to be chapter 20. Let's go to the end of the Surah. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَهْلَكْنَاهُمْ بِعَذَابٍ مِّنْ قَبْلِهِ لَقَالُوا رَبَّنَا لَوْ لَا أَرْسَلْتَ إِلَيْنَا رَسُولًا فَنَتَّبِعَ آيَاتِكَ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنَّ ذِلَّ وَنَخْزَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and if we had destroyed them with a punishment before him, if we had, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't do it, they would have said, they would have said, our Lord, why did you not send to us a messenger so we could have followed your verses before we were humiliated and disgraced? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us what they would have said if so and so hap uh, 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 had happened. Also, in the story of Musa, like we uh, يعني, discussed last time, the story of Musa and Al-Khadr. And some of the ulama say Al-Khadr alayhi salam, as he is a prophet, on one of the sayings of the ulama. He's, uh, in, the, in the story, he said, uh, uh, الْغُلَامُ So all of it, actually. He said, وَأَمَّا السَّفِينَةُ فَكَانَتْ لِمَسَاكِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ فِي الْبَحْرِ فَأَرَدْتُ أَنْ نَعِيبَهَا وَكَانَ وَرَاءَهُمْ مَلِكٌ يَأْخُذُ كُلَّ سَفِينَةٍ غَصْبًا So they were uh, poor uh, masakin that owned a ship. They owned a ship and they worked at sea. So we wanted to uh, make a aibah, uh, يعني make a aib in it, a, a, something which is... Uh, Subhanallah, I'm lost for words. Uh, wait, let me see. Uh, defect, defect, naam, to make a defect in it. And kana wara'ahum, wara'ahum meaning that in front of them, not behind them here, it means in front of them there is a malik, a king, who will take uh, uh, every ship. So that's one. Number two, amma al-ghulamu, fakana abahum mu'mineen, fakashina, an yurhiqahuma tughyanan wa kufra. So if he had lived, he would have uh, he would have, la ilaha illallah, let's look at the English translation for a uh, better or nicer way of saying this. Uh, as for the boy, he said his parents were believers, and we feared that he would overburden them with transgression and disbelief. So if he had lived, that what he would have done, and so on. There is a beautiful benefit, a beautiful benefit. I've heard this from a sheikh called Ahmed Mansour. Sabalik, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him. Not a very known sheikh. He's an academic sheikh who is, uh, a, yani, who takes care of the uh, PhD programs and the doctorate uh, uh, theses and so on in the uh, Islamic University online. He said something beautiful. He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Masakin, Masakin. So they deserve zakah because the miskin deserves zakah. So a miskin is somebody who has something, he has money and so on, but is not sufficient for him. He's still lacking the, necess the necessities. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that they are masakin. Allah said in the Quran they are masakin and they own a ship. They own a ship. Subhanallah. So the Sheikh said, don't say, well, somebody, he, how is he miskin and he owns a phone and he has internet. Allah said they own a ship and they are still masakin. Wallahi, beautiful, beautiful benefit said by the Shaykh Hafizahullah Ta'ala. And the Shaykh is from, just so you know, from the students of Shaykh bin Baz, the students of Shaykh Al-Allam Abdul Razzaq Afifi, and the student of Shaykh Al-Albani, 
رحمهم الله تعالى نعم so the belief in qadr consists of four matters the first of which is knowledge to believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all knowing of everything and nothing is hidden from him neither on earth nor in the in the heavens as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in ayatul kursi he fully knows what is ahead of them and what is behind them writing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the pen to write everything that will happen until the day of judgment now, so before he created before he created the heavens and the earth uh, 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 50,000 years. Uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in uh, Surah 27, Ayah 75, and there is nothing concealed within the heaven and the earth except that it is in a clear register. Third is the will. Oh, we didn't continue the Mashiach. Naam, the Mashiach. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills is, and whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not will isn't. And there isn't anything in the in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the world in the universe which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not will and this is very dangerous to say that if somebody says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't will this billah, this is the aqidah of the majus they are the ones the fire worshippers they are the ones that claim that there is a creator with the creator they claim that you know light creates goodness and dark creates evil well and this saying is exactly like that saying people have a will but their will cannot be executed except by the will of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for whatever allah wills happens and whatever allah does not will will not come to pass as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah 81 ayah 29 and you do not will except that allah wills lord of the worlds but we have free choice but you have free choice there is no negation there you have free choice Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed that you have free choice and you are tested upon that so there is no forcing Naam. the final matter is creation the abd is created and his actions follow him so they are created as well as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah 37 ayah 96 Allah has created you and that which you do Naam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of all things and this is the end of today's lesson insha'Allah azza wa jal <coughs> subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik shahadu an la ilaha illa ant nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik wa an'im ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen